So um, in prepping for this session, I decided to take a little different approach. Um, I'm not up here to sell Ring Central to you. Uh, I wanted to talk about actually the digital workplace. Uh, my background is, is I just came out of uh, semiconductor industry. I spent the last 12 years uh, there working in large industrials and just joined Ring Central in December. And one of the things um, uh, that I did when I first joined was is uh, coming to Silicon Valley, meeting with other CIOs, other IT professionals, and this is what I'm learning. Or this is, these are all the words that were used in a recent roundtable. I got really kind of bored sitting here listening to all the people talk about artificial intelligence. They were talking about quantum computing, GDPR, HIPAA. And you know, I started writing these words down. I realized that uh, everyone who's in IT uh, right now is dealing with a lot of complexity. I mean, we all feel it. Uh, even at this conference, you're hearing about simplification. And what I was trying to do is figure out you know, where the real problems are in companies. We all get hit with vendors asking us to buy things. We all get hit by our CEOs or our executive teams about doing big structural things. And these are the things that you're being asked to parse. And it's a level of complexity, and this is where you're putting all of your investment and time. I can probably guarantee you that with the few precious dollars that you have left for innovation, you're trying to figure out how to do supply chain management. You're trying to figure out how to do things for HR. You're trying to figure out how to do a different level of online finance. And the reality is, is that we're ignoring the workers. The people that are out there every day trying to get things done for us are not engaged. And there's a, there's a study that uh, I just read um, from Forrester that basically said the vast majority of the workplace investment is being done by the actual employees themselves. Sure, you've bought trucks. Yep, you've got Slack. You probably have Ring Central. You have a bunch of different collaboration capabilities, but these things are being done native uh, by the workforce. And the reason being is, is because it's changing rapidly. So while the CIO is investing and the IT department is investing in large structural changes for the company, um, I can guarantee you that the workforce is moving ahead because they have to. They have to figure out how to collaborate differently. They have to figure out how to share. They have to be, figure out how to get their job done. And unfortunately, the money is run out in the IT stack before we get to them. So the workplace is changing, and it's changing rapidly. Just some stats. 50% of the global workforce will be remote by 2020. That's just next year. Um, and this is actually accelerating. 74% of the time in the workforce, this digital workforce, is on collaborative work. So they're collaborating, but we're not giving them the tools, and we're not giving them the capabilities, and we're not making it simple. They're spending all their time suffering through a bunch of different fragmented capabilities. And then finally, for those who are actually in the office, and I think everyone can probably feel this one, for those of you who are actually in the office, you're spending more than half your day away from your desk. And so it's a mobile workforce, and it's, uh, you're trying to get things done with other people who are running around either from home or different continents or different locations or maybe different parts of the campus. And so what happens is, is that we have fragmented communications, all right? So let's talk about the workforce again. What they really care about is sharing documents, meeting with people, collaborating. They probably care a little less about this big supply chain management, multi-million dollar investment that you're making, right? It's good for the company, but ultimately it's creating a disengaged workforce. And they're going out and buying it themselves. And I can give you examples of Slack. I mean, everyone has probably had Slack penetrate into their the workforce, that's great. It was being brought in because there was a need, because people were finding friction in their day to day. So uh, another uh, statistic, and I think this is probably understated, that uh, average worker uh, toggles between 10 different apps in a work day. You probably start counting them on your hands, uh, what you go through. Extremely inefficient, think about it. You're messaging on one app, you're doing video conferencing on another app, you are trying to get documents on another app. You're finding yourself bouncing between different capabilities, and it's not seamless, and it's complicated. And you're wasting up to an hour a day doing this. So let me give you an example, and I think we all can relate to this one. Uh, I was sitting in the back of an Uber the other day, and my boss called me, and he said, hey, I need you to get on this conference call. 
Um, I was able to get on the conference call, and I'll tell you how I did it on a single app. Most people would have to flip over to another email system to get the pointer to get to the conference to be able to log in, and then they have to go to another app to be able to get the document that people are sharing because the content isn't coming up. This is every day in the workplace, and people are wasting time trying to figure out how to pull it all together. And the worst part is, is that the volume's increasing, and the reason why it's increasing is because everyone is scattered. People are no longer in the building. If, you're, if you have the luxury of being in a small startup where everyone's in the same building, great. I would uh, probably hazard that the vast majority of us have people scattered across the world, or at least scattered across a large campus. And so the volume is increasing. People are reaching out. They're, they're messaging you. They're texting you. They have you on Slack chats. They're hitting you up with video conferences. It's actually chaotic. And the, and the worst part is, is that everyone every day is feeling this. And actually, this is becoming one of the biggest reasons for disengagement in the workforce is because they don't feel like they're in control. And if the employees feel disengaged, then when the customer and the employee come together, it adds even more complexity. And what I mean by this is that if you're internally trying to work through your messaging, communication, and collaboration, and it's messy, imagine now working with your external customer, which gets even messier. And if you have these two worlds coming together, it becomes very complicated. So what's happened in the last five years is that there's two segments that have really emerged. And they're cloud-based. Uh, go figure. You're at a conference like Okta, which is cloud-first. Uh, we at Ring Central believe in a cloud-first approach uh, to both employee and customer communications. And what you're seeing here is two sections. So on the right, we call it UCAS, Unified Communications as a Service. Cloud-native capabilities where it's Cloud PBX, it's messaging, video, and meetings, all in one app, all in one capability. You have the ability to ping between these three in a seamless way. So if you're in the UCAS space, and you probably hear about a lot of players in this, this is an emerging market. It's becoming a multi-billion dollar emerging market that is helping with the employee engagement. On the other side, CCAS is where we're talking about where you have your customer service where outbound blooded customer engagement, digital customer engagement. What I mean by digital customer engagement is the new way for uh, people to engage with companies is through social channels. So imagine complaining about your favorite airline about the outage yesterday, and you're going through a, a social channel. These are where the employees and customers are now starting to engage together. So combined, we believe that employee engagement and customer engagement combined is the new collaborative communication platform of the future. And uh, the hypothesis here is, is that this is very complex. But it's only complex if you're thinking about the legacy. So I've run teams that have had to deal with old PBX hardware, you know, web meetings, audio conferencing, fax, telcos. If you're, large, you know, if you're running a large enterprise, this is extremely complicated. It's extremely expensive. And it's very disjointed. And you're probably spending a lot of time and energy on something that should be very seamless. And the reason why this is complex is because it's on-prem. Everyone's using the Avayas, the Mitels, and the other capabilities that are out there, the Cisco capabilities. Um, and if you look at below the iceberg, you know, the old metaphor, you're spending a lot of time and energy on this. And at Ring Central, to shift gears to why I think this is the future, is that it's all-inclusive and it's an app and we've taken care of all the complexity for you. And why this matters in the new world is because speed is the new business currency. If you're setting up new offices, the last thing you want to do is have to order hardware. If you are moving people in, onboarding, the last thing you want to do is have to deal with putting a telephone on their desk. We can do that too, but the new modality is people running around in the world with their mobile phones or their laptops, trying to get their work done and not worrying about being on premise. So if you start thinking about the simplification, Ring Central as a platform, uh, both from the customer and employee engagement, is very powerful. But uh, like you heard this morning in the keynote, open platforms matter. And we have over 170 integrations. With all of the capabilities you have today, I'm sure you've deployed. Um, and we have over 2,000 customer integrations and growing. This is our fastest growing capability that we have right now. Open platforms are the future in the cloud, open, integrating to what you have, and let the consolidation happen and get some control back. 
people wonder about Ring Central, it's a company that's cloud native. It's been uh, around for 20 years. And in the 20 years, this team has learned how to run telco in the cloud. It actually, we're pioneering a lot of the capabilities that you're hearing from other companies today. We are global scale. We have POPs all over the world. Um, so this is not about just a US-based centric company. We have customers that are running in Asia and Europe and are seamless in their capabilities. And to make things even better, we just announced capabilities that allow you as system administrators to actually look at the MOS scores or the quality of service across all legs from end to end. So I actually was on a conference call and you heard the classic uh, person that was not engaging well. Their voice was chopped up. You know, we've all been in those meetings, right? And everyone looks at the IT professional and says, what's going on? With Ring Central and any good UCAS provider should give you quality of service dashboards where you can look in and say, that person's having a bad experience on this conference call because they're on a 3G network in China and they're trying to do voice over IP on hops all the way back to the US. It's not gonna work. And we have capabilities today that allow you to be able to deconstruct in real time the MOS scores of people. And this is what cloud really does well that you can't get from that iceberg of capabilities. And we can, across all people on all sessions and all recordings, tell you exactly the quality of service. Um, and this is the power of, of a cloud native solution. And then simplifying security. You heard it today with the, the Okta keynote. Ring Central is a uh, very tight partner with Okta. Imagine all those integrations. Imagine Ring Central as your, your cloud based telephony, video, and messaging capability all in one, uh, one place. And imagine that it's seamless, where Okta and Ring Central together make it so that anyone can log in anywhere and be able to communicate and collaborate and, and get rid of all that complexity of all the different capabilities that they're trying to use for collaboration. So uh, proof is in the pudding. Um, this is not about uh, Ring Central on its own. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Rich Brownlee who actually has deployed Ring Central in a large scale and I'm looking forward to uh, taking questions with you after we're done. So thank oh, you. Thank you Trevor very much. Thank you, appreciate Pleasure. it. Oh, let's get that off of there. All right. <laughs> uh, so a little bit about Pacific Dental Services. Um, I'm going to back up a little bit about how we got started to give some context about how we ended up um, with some of the challenges we had as an organization and how we, what we did to solve it. Um, so as of this year, we're now 25 years old. Uh, it was started by uh, Steve Thorne, who was trying to assist his dad with running his dental practice. His dad wanted to digitize his, his patient records, et cetera. Um, over the years, he was starting to service other uh, dentists and uh, incorporated the business, um, and it has grown organically um, over the last 25 years, um, which means there was a lot of mom and pop operations. So um, two years ago, I started at the company, six months after uh, the new CIO, David Baker, who was, uh, had a really good head on his shoulders on where he wanted to take the business. The company at that time was a, was a, a, a mix of um, On-prem, Shortel, uh, Asterisk, Cisco, POTS lines. We had about 550 offices back then. So if you can imagine some of the older offices have POTS lines with a, with a no joke, with a tape recorder for the old answering machine. Um, it's how they were taking phone calls, how they're engaging with their patients. Um, we had built a contact center at that time. And um, people had to do the star 72. Here's how we forward our calls at the end of the day to our contact center. So not very efficient, a lot of manual um, uh, processes in there, plenty of opportunities for things to break down. In addition to that, there had been no real strategy about how the enterprise was going to grow because it was a small company at that time and it had now 500 plus offices, over a billion dollars of revenue. There was a ton of shared accounts internally. Um, Yahoo Instant Messenger, people calling and, and texting uh, patients from their own personal cell phone, um, passwords that don't expire. Um, I think we'd just gone into our 20th state back then. Um, and you can imagine trying to navigate that internally to try and support the patient was, was a challenge. Trying to collaborate internally was, was a challenge. And you know, if you're remote, you had to have your laptop in order to VPN in just to join the conference. Um, which conference bridge were they on? Which phone system were they on? I can't get in. I'm on my cell phone. Can you have someone call me uh, three-way to join? It was a mess. So um, what we had done is we had then 
identified some of the challenges that we're having there. Identity, who has access to what, and then of course the, the, the communication collaboration. We had uh, on-premise Shortel, which was uh, going end of life. We were facing um, quite a bit of, of expense to, to upgrade. Of course, Cisco's in there selling us their stuff. Um, quickly found out that it was just a hodgepodge of, of things put together. They probably won't let me say that. Um, but we went down the road and uh, learned about Ring Central, learned about um, Okta. We all certainly needed to uh, get away from the shared accounts um, and move into uh, something that we could identify who was accessing what data, uh, have, a, have a platform that we can uh, communicate with each other on. So over the last year, in fact, last year we finished um, um, moving all of our dental offices to Ring Central. They're 100% Ring Central in the field. We're now at 730 offices. Um, we now have automatic forwarding to the contact center. Um, if the phone doesn't get answered during the day, um, after hours, it automatically goes to the contact center so that we never lose the opportunity to talk to a patient when they want to talk to us because that's a very small period of time that they're willing to talk on the phone. So now we're able to, now we're able to talk to them when they, want, when, they want, when they want to talk to us. One thing that we found when we were uh, on the same platform and then moving calls over to the contact center was our, our, our call volume doubled. Um, we thought, is that the new normal? Is it how it's always been? Turns out we just lost a lot of calls that weren't coming in because things weren't forwarded properly, et cetera. Now we have the metrics and the data to then go back and do some user training and it's very interesting to see that the offices that were the higher revenue offices are actually the ones that pick up the phone when the customer calls. It's pretty, pretty amazing how that works. Um, the ones that were at the bottom end didn't really answer the phone. So this is a really good uh, inf uh, slide that shows what it was before. Uh, Trevor mentioned there were t 10 apps that people were normally using. I can tell you that internally uh, at our company, it was a, a lot more than that uh, with no visibility on what was moving patient data. Um, who was talking to who. Like I said, we had uh, you know, shared accounts. So we had a, um, a big campaign um, to identify and categorize people um, based on their role. So role-based security, understanding who that is. Um, we engage with Okta in order to make that happen. And what we have now is a very stable platform through Ring Central and Okta to identify who, who is who, who they have access to, uh, what data they have access to. We're now rolling out multi-factor authentication this week uh, with Okta for access to uh, certain, certain assets in the company. Um, Ring Central platform has been very good. We can join from anywhere in the world from your cell phone without the complexity of having to VPN in before, like we had before. Um, we are, can easily share documents. Uh, internally, on the collaboration side, it's been, it's been, it's been awesome. And I'm just saying that because Trevor's here. It, is, it has been really good because of when I started, and David Baker will say this, uh, in 2017, why are we having phone problems? And it was, it was, a, it was a challenge. So I didn't, I didn't uh, think that I would join the company and all of a sudden phones are the biggest problem. But now it's, we have happy customers. Um, the collaboration is great which allows our internal customers to then service our doctor owners and the patients. Oh, missed that one. We're also Office 365 as well. We got away from the on-prem environment. We shrunk our data center space by half, um, moved to Workday as a master as our, uh, as our model for, uh, for Okta. Uh, we do have the uh, integrations into Box, uh, Semanage, Ring Central, of course. And we've rolled out things for self-service password reset, a lot of things that were happening before was very manual that the um, service desk had to address manually. Um, we got away from the manual help less desk um, uh, situation and moved into a, to a, to a place where we have reduced the amount of incidents. The time to, time to, re time to repair has been reduced considerably. Uh, this is from 2018. Uh, the important thing to matter to notice uh, that's not really reflected in that graph is that we added um, nearly 100 offices last year. So uh, we've gone from the last two years from 9,000 employees to almost 12,000 this year. Uh, we're open 104 offices this year, and the the incidence um, has gone down. The ability to self-service and, and repair uh, has has allowed us to focus on the higher value um, issues, um, while while uh, increasing our customer satisfaction. 
but yeah, all that while adding a couple thousand employees at the same time and open, opening nearly 100 offices. And with that, I invite Trevor back up for, I think we have a Q&A session. I think. Given that you're in the medical field, are you high trust certified organization or how do you handle compliance and regulatory concerns? Uh, we are going through the high trust certification. Uh, we do, yes, we are, uh, we are considered medical, so HIPAA compliance. Uh, we also, you know, PCI compliance for, for payments that we do, uh, but we are going through that high trust certification. Okay, and Ring Central has already been high trust certified as a platform or service? Uh, it, it can be, yes. Okay, and all the data is in transit through Ring Central, or is there data at rest as well there? Uh, both. And so, and that passes encryption standards then as well? Yeah, so uh, there's different ways data passes through the Ring Central network. Um, so let's just talk about the UCAS capability because contact center is different. Um, so for UCAS, uh, if you choose to record uh, conference calls, then that rests uh, within the Ring Central ecosystem. Um, not everyone chooses to do that, um, but obviously you can. Can you talk a little bit more about engaging patients um, and kind of where they touch the platform and any identity things related to that? Uh, so on the, uh, for the patients, how they engage with us, well, obviously through phone, we're now looking at uh, omni-channel uh, with, uh, with actually Ring Central is one of the things we're looking at for the contact center to allows uh, our agents to reach out or talk to the customers. Didn't matter if they wanted to come in through AIM or Facebook or you know the chat on our own website. Um, that is something that we're developing this year. So that's that would be that's one that is a partnership that we're looking at uh, with Ring Central on that. Um, and then of course the phones uh, is is are the other piece, which is a pretty. Uh, you'd be surprised how how many people uh, utilize the phone to, in in scheduling and talking with their dentist. Uh, we've, we're rolling out online scheduling this year. Uh, while we're seeing a high usage of, of people under 40 using that, uh, most of the other crowd are still, you know, calling us at 7 p.m. trying to trying to make an appointment. But I can tell you, phones are not our not our top 10 problems anymore. What kind of analytics do you capture for the patient engagement pieces on the phone? On the phone. Uh, the analytics, so if uh, we have different marketing campaigns with that different numbers that people call in, so we track that. Uh, we track, you know, what time of day they call in, which office, because as it comes into the office, now that it's all, and they're all on the Ring Central platform, we see from, from the office side coming in, whereas before we didn't, didn't have that information. So what offices are calling in, where they're calling from, the number, if they're responding to, uh, to a marketing campaign, um, and then outbound for calls. It could be marketing related, could be appointment reminders, um, and obviously, we try to tie that back to the patient um, uh, in our patient records so that we understand uh, different, different aspects around that. Yeah. Is that tied to like a Salesforce CRM or, or anything around uh, yes. how you're doing? Yes, your Salesforce, marketing? correct. Okay. And, and so you've, you've got the, both the clinical, like the patient dental records mixed in with with sort of the, your, your CRM and, and marketing campaigns, is, so, is that correct? Uh, so our, the patient record is on-prem right now. Uh, so how our model works is that the dental office, uh, they have a, we have a doctor owner, is it, we have a, the, the doctor owner model, um, is they have bought and set up their own practice. So you won't see dental, Pacific Dental Services name anywhere. It's gonna be whatever the, the doctor calls it. We're more of the silent partner, if you will. We handle all the back end things. So the x-rays and the patient data, we have a local copy at the dental office, and then we also pull that back to our data center for claims processing, and then to, to ensure that that data is uh, uh, backed up, if you will. Uh, there were some instances in Houston where uh, when the storm came through, the office got flooded, we were able to put patient data back on and get that office up and running again without losing anything. Uh, so that was, that's a really nice thing that, that we provide for our, uh, for our supported practices. Um, but we, we do the whole nine yards on the back end, phone all the way through to engaging with um, uh, insurance companies, et cetera. So the patient data as far as the uh, x-rays, all that are on-prem. We do, we do encrypt it and we do restrict access, of course. Um, but that does not, the patient data as far as x-rays and all that do not go into Salesforce. Yeah. 
no more questions. All right. Um, well, let's give a big hand for our speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.